season in the rain. We can rejoice and be glad. Those of you who have black cars, you can rejoice that a little of the pollen being washed out of there. Welcome to our first night of our spring revival. Let's give God the glory. We're so glad to welcome you here to our sanctuary. We welcome our online viewers as well. Praise God for each and every one of you. And let's show some love for our guest evangelist, Pastor Fred Lee and of the Franklin Avenue Baptist Church of New Orleans. Louisiana. It's, it's been a, a few years since he's been here, but uh, Sister Tony Dorn planted a seed in my ear uh, a few months ago, and uh, now here we are. So thank God for this opportunity to be sharing with such a great man of God on this evening. Amen. So uh, we acknowledge as always that we don't own the rights to any of the music that we will be sharing in tonight's worship, but we praise God for those artists who have shared their gifts with the kingdom so that we might worship with them in spirit and in truth. So Pastor Nathan Martin, if you would like to come a little closer, you may. Come on, come on, come on. And notice, remember I said if you would like to, not forcing you, good, that good. And we have uh, Pastor Gregory Clark here as well, we're thankful for the men of God who have come to share with us, but y'all didn't come here to hear me run off at the mouth, so we're going to ask our choir to go ahead and lead us in song, and if you know the song, I think you should know the song that they're singing. I think practically everybody knows every phrase. So can we stand to our feet as we sing every phrase to our God?
not a word with me, but I told him when I left the sanctuary and Sunday, they gave me that fly, I said, Fred Lou's going to be here. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think anything going to stop me from being that good man. Amen. Amen. I hadn't seen Fred in a while, but I told myself, I said, now, if I miss, don't go. The good Lord has told him something that I'm going to miss, and I don't think I'm going to miss anything. <laughs> the scripture reading is even going to come from 7 Timothy, and we're going to get at the 15th verse. And for that child, thou hast known the Holy Spirit, which are able to make these wise unto salvation, the faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures are given for inspiration of God and the proper for God, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly appointed unto all good works. I have read you, Second Timothy, the 15th to the 17th verse. The Lord has blessed the reader, the hearer, the doers of the holy word. Amen. 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 Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Blessing to be able to gather today to revive and regenerate ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now have a short prayer. Eternal God, you are our rock. You are the firm foundation of everything that we build. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. You give gifts to your people for the good of the church. Mm -hmm. You equip, train your people to carry out the good works which you set in advance. Mm -hmm. As we meet today, Father, we ask that you will provide wisdom, guidance, and direction. Please, Lord. Remind us, Father, that you are our loving ally. You are our fortress. You are the tower of our strength. And you are our rescuer. Everything we need, we can find in you, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you will bless all that are within sound of my voice, Father. All the uh, pastors that are on the roster tonight, and all the ones that are visiting, Father, yes. that you will bless us, Father, yes. Lord, that you yes. in this evening, yes. that you will strengthen us to go forth after these services, Father, yes. to do the work, like I said before, the work that you set in advance, Father, yes. to do, Father. Yes. Father, we thank you for that, thank you. for the opportunity to do your work, yes. to do your deeds, yes. which yes. we may glorify not ourselves, but that you may be glorified in this service. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Amen.
we are truly thankful to the Most High God for all that he's done for us. This time again, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to our spring revival. Amen. It's our prayer that you felt welcome when you came through the doors. If there's anything that we can do that will make your stay more pleasant, more enjoyable, more comfortable, please don't hesitate to let us know. I'd also like to acknowledge on tonight that we have our city officials here. But, but before I go into that, uh, there, there's one thing that I, I would just like to do since it's March 25th. Everyone who has a birthday on March 25th, could you please stand? <laughs> that knowing that we have four people in the house tonight celebrating birthdays all today. So happy birthday to each and every one of you who are celebrating a birthday on tonight and what better place to celebrate that than in the house of the one who gave you life so that you can celebrate your birthday. So now back to that we have uh, City officials here, we have our mayor, Mayor Rich Dupree, his wife Susan, sharing with us tonight. We have city councilman, Pastor Nathan Martin, sharing with us tonight. And don't think I'm going to ignore city councilman from District 2, a member of Good Folk Missionary Baptist Church of Congo, Louisiana, Councilman Kevin Dorn, Sr. At this time, I'm going to invite Mayor Dupree and our councilman to come forward uh, with a presentation and to say a few words of welcome to our fair city, to our guests. Amen. So, Mayor, councilman, councilman. Well, what an honor it is to... Uh, to be back uh, here tonight and to uh, to worship uh, with uh, a man of God that uh, I have followed uh, for quite a, a long time, and uh, he has been one of the brightest, uh, if not the brightest, shining light uh, in the greater New Orleans area for 35 uh, plus years. And, uh, <laughs> He has uh, led uh, uh, our Southern Baptist Convention, he has led uh, our state, and uh, he has uh, led the uh, rebirth of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church uh, from, uh, from the disaster of Katrina to, uh, to where it is now, and uh, still, with all that he has on his plate, uh, he has time to, to come uh, to communities and share uh, love of God in the way that he does. So, uh, I'm going to ask uh, if um, uh, Brother Luther would step forward. I'd like to ask uh, two council members uh, to join us. Uh, this is uh, it, it's supposed to be symbolic. I'd like to tell you that the, the key, uh, the tear will uh, open just about anything. Uh, but I, I can tell you it's uh, uh, it's given uh, with uh, with a heart of love from the mayor's office, and uh, certainly uh, a pleasure to welcome you to our great city once again. lady and uh, we certainly uh, uh, rejoice in uh, the opportunity to have uh, someone of uh, Brother Luther's caliber with us and uh, again 
you've got one more chance tomorrow night to bring some folks with you. The weather will cooperate tomorrow. I'm already claiming that in Jesus' name. So. Side note, uh, Pastor Luther has been a, a personal friend of myself and my wife for a number of years. You know, for a gentleman whose name is known all over the country, in and out of the U.S., whenever you call a cell phone, he always picks up. And that's things that you can't say sometimes about people that you've been knowing all your life. <laughs> what was interesting is on last week, I had a customer in the store, and we were doing some financial work. And uh, this is a young man, he worked offshore. And has a real good job and has a lot of things going for him in his life. And he was telling me about last year he got saved. But then he was telling me about a revival that he was at. And this was like last Monday or so. And he was saying, man, there's this guy coming from New Orleans. He was on fire. <laughs> and, he, and, and he says, uh, I can't remember his name. He says, but I got a flyer. And he sent it to my phone. And I looked at it. It was Pastor Fred Lewis. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, you know, when, whenever someone with the accolades and the titles of one of Pastor Fred Luter can come to small communities and still touch people and impact people, for all of us who uh, would like to be somewhat of influencers, it shows us what real humility is about. It's never that you grow too large or get too high to reach those who are in small communities. And I like to, to, I had to take the moment to thank him for that because what's the chance of me running into someone yes. doing business yes. to tell me about a man who taught him about a man yes. that changed his life when a young man that feels that he has everything magic in a bottle. Because this, this is the type of life that this young man has. He's been blessed beyond. But he was telling me about God and what God has done for him and how God has provided for him Amen. and how this man killed the fire that he Amen. found last year at the revival. Praise God. How he killed it for him that Sunday night. Praise God. All right? Amen. This time, we will now prepare for our worship and giving. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what does that have to do with offering? Everything. God gave his best. And the reason that he gave his best was because of his love. So we come to give, not grudgingly, not of necessity, but cheerfully. For God loves a cheerful giver. And we think about all that God has done for us. We could never repay him. But the more that we bless others, the more we open up the possibility of God blessing us. So as we go to God in prayer, let us prepare our gifts, lift them up unto the Lord as we ask his blessings upon this time of giving. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given to us once again to come into your house of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time of giving. We pray that you will bless the gifts, bless the givers, bless those who have a desire to give but are not able to at this time. 
Lord God, we ask that you will consecrate and sanctify these gifts so that we may be able to use them for your kingdom and for your glory. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Jesus. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
the father of true worship is revealed. There are three basic responses required of a man. We have to acknowledge God as suffering. We have to see ourselves as sinners. We have to accept the saving grace of God. And we must answer God's call to church. And I heard the word from the prophet saying, In the year that King Goldshire died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And hovering about him were six winged seven With two wings, they covered their feet, and with two wings, they covered their eyes, and with two wings, they did fly. And Isaiah said that his spirit shook the foundation of the earth. And so today, saints, I challenge you to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. So let's worship him.
say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. And that's the reason that we're here. We've come to worship our Lord yes. and Savior amen. Jesus Christ. Let's give up our music department. Amen. Our choir, our division. Brother and Sister Act on the music positions. Amen. And thank God for them and thank God for each and every one of you. Well, good evening. Amen. How's everybody doing? It is so good to be back here in Pineville, Louisiana, and at the Good Hope uh, Missionary Baptist Church. I want to thank God for my brother, Pastor Lewis, for this incredible privilege and honor that you have given me to be here for these uh, two nights of revival. I know you know a lot of pastors and preachers across this city, state, and nation, my brother, that can be here these two nights, but I'm so honored, my brother, that you thought enough of this street preacher from New Orleans, Louisiana. Amen. <laughs> You're part of this service, and I appreciate you so, so very much. And Sister Dawn called me about this day and uh, uh, about uh, being here. Uh, my schedule was extremely, extremely, extremely busy, but I have nothing but good thoughts and memories of a uh, good hope and meeting Kevin and the uh, the council priest, the people who were here, the former mayor, Mayor Fields, and others, man, and just had a great, great, great members. And so I said, Tony, I got some things I need to try to work out, but I'm glad that we really were able to make it happen. Mayor, this do pretty with an honor and a joy uh, that you're here tonight, particularly on your birthday, bro. Yes, that says a lot about y'all, Mayor, man. Amen, amen. So it's just good to some money coming to church instead of resting in it. So, uh, amen. <laughs> we thank God for you, uh, Mayor Dupree, and Dupree for the other council uh, persons or here, Councilman Martin and Councilman Dorn and other city officials and others and pastors who are uh, here with us tonight. Pastor Clark, good to see you, brother, and thank God for each and every last one of you to all the other pastors and members of the gospel. We're present here on tonight to members of Good Hope and to all members of all the guests who are here tonight. I'm indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here back with you one more time. It's been years since I've been here at, uh, at Good Hope. Matter of fact, I was telling Pastor that the last time I was here, I had an afro and black hair. <laughs> I'm going to show you how long that has been, but it's a really, really, really an honor uh, to be back here. And again, I want to thank you, Pastor, for this wonderful privilege. I want to thank all of you also for coming out uh, in this weather. Amen. You know, doctors and rain don't get along. We just don't leave it. It, it rained two weeks ago at Franklin Avenue, man. And, uh, man, the FBI couldn't find all of our members who missed that day in Franklin rain. But we go everywhere else in the ring. We go to football games, the basketball games, the soccer game. But uh, but I want to commend each and every one of you for coming out and being here with us on these two nights. My assignment is to preach the word of God, and that's all I know how to do. I, I've been doing it all of my life, and I just, well, not all of my life. Uh, yeah, there were some days that I wasn't living for God, but God saved me miraculously, and I started living for God, and God miraculously called me to ministry. And I am uh, I'm excited for this great, great uh, opportunity, particularly to be here during Passion Week. This is a big, this is a major, major week in the life of the church all across America. Because uh, uh, Passion Week talks about the last days in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, for tonight and tomorrow night, I specifically will be dealing with some events leading up to Calvary. And trust and pray that you'll be blessed. Uh, by these messages tonight and uh, tomorrow night. So turn your Bibles tonight to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 26, and also put your finger in Luke, chapter 22. Matthew, chapter 26, and Luke, chapter 22, as we share tonight uh, in the Word of God. Y'all please say amen. Amen. In fact, y'all can say amen all throughout my son. I'm kind of used to it. Y'all make, make me feel like I'm back at home, all right? Matthew chapter 26, verses 14, 15, and 16. And then I will look at Luke chapter 22, verses 3, 5, and 6. You'll find these singular words. Verse 14 of Matthew 26 says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. 
Luke chapter 22, verses 3 through 6. Luke 22, verses 3 through 6. Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and praise you for this incredible privilege and honor that you've given me to be back here at the Good Hope Baptist Church in Pineville, Louisiana. Thank you for Pastor Joseph, uh, Pastor Lewis and his invitation, God. Thank you for uh, this privilege, God, of standing in this pulpit where there's no lack of preaching. Thank you for the city officials, God, Matt Dupree, uh, Councilman Norton, Councilman uh, uh, Dolan, God. Thank you for all the pastors who are here, God, and I pray your blessings upon them, the members as well as our guests. Now, God, do as I ask every time I stand and preach, and that is, God, hide me behind the cross. Yes. Father, let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. Yes. To the end, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and all sinners will come to repentance. Be careful to give your name all the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. And for us, say, let people of God say, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to look again at verse uh, chapter 22, verse 5, and says, And they were glad and agreed to give him money. Amen. With that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, with this revival in mind, I want to preach tonight from the subject, What's your price? <laughs> What's your price? Brothers and sisters, have you ever thought about why people do certain things? Have you ever wondered why people do, wonder why do people do certain things? When you look at the news on the television, that's those when you read the news in the newspaper, when you scan the news on the internet, when you hear the news on the radio, may I have you ever thought about why people do certain things. Yes. You ever wonder why people do certain things that they do? For example, why do robbers rob stores yes. and banks and people? Why do thieves steal from homes and cars and schools? Why do murderers murder innocent strangers? Why do sex offenders abuse little children? Why do rapists rape? Why do shoplifters shoplift? Why do terrorists terrorize? Why do races hate people simply because of the color of their skin? But not just those in today's society, Kevin. Have you ever thought about, have you ever wondered about why people in the Bible did certain things? In fact, have you thought about, have you ever looked at it? Why do people do certain things? Have you ever wondered why do people in the Bible did, why did they do certain things? For example, why did Adam and Eve listen to Lucifer instead of listening to the Lord? Why did Cain kill his own brother, Abel? Why did Noah get drunk and naked in front of his children? Why did Abraham lie about Sarah being his wife? Why did Jacob deceive his daddy, Isaac? Why did Samson tell Delilah the source of his strength? Why was King Saul so jealous of, King, of young David? Why did King David commit adultery with Bathsheba? Why did Elijah pray that he might die after God gave him a victory on Mount Carmel? However, out of all the things, Good Hope, that I thought about why people do what they do in today's society, out of all the things, Pastor, that I wonder why people in the Bible did certain things, out of all the things that I look at in the scriptures, the one thing that has always made baffled me, one thing, Pastor Mark, that has always concerned me, one thing about the clock that has always perplexed me. One thing that has always bewildered me. The one thing that has always puzzled me. The one thing that has always confused me. The one thing that always astonished me. That has always amazed me. The one thing that always kept on worried me. The one thing that always troubled me is why in the world 
did Judas do what he did? Yes. Why did Judas betray Jesus Christ? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, every time I read about the incidents that led up to Calvary, every time I look at the incidents that led up to Jesus being arrested in the garden of Gethsemane, every time I read about the incidents of Jesus being tried in the kangaroo court by Pilate, every time I look at the incidents about Jesus being mocked and beaten by the Roman soldiers. Every time I look at Jesus being marched up God out this hill, carrying that old rugged cross uh, on his shoulders. Every time I think about uh, Jesus having nails driven in his hands uh, and nails driven back in his feet. Uh, every time I think about the spear that was driven uh, in his side. Uh, every time I think about the crown of thorns uh, that was violently pushed up uh, upon his head. Every time I think about the fact that Jesus was crucified between two known criminals, I cannot help but wonder, I cannot help but ponder, I cannot help but think about why would Judas betray Jesus Christ? Think about that. Nobody in history, in the history of this world, could ever come close to what Judas did. Out of all the criminals, out of all the mass murderers, out of all the people in our society that have done things in the past, that are doing things, like, no one, Pastor, no one comes close to what Judas did. Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Think about that for a moment. Yes. Uh, throughout, uh, think about that throughout the course of this world. A lot of people have done a lot of crazy things. A lot of people have done a lot of dumb things. A lot of people have done a lot of foolish and cruel. A lot of people have done a lot of wicked and sinful and brutal and harmful and sadistic and heartless and humane things in life. However, only Judas, only Judas has the distinction of betraying Jesus Christ. Out of all the stuff, man, that people have done in our lifetime, and thing that we read about Kevin in the past, only Judas had the distinction of betraying Jesus Christ. Let that soak in for a moment. Let that uh, ponder on that for a moment. I wonder if that's the reason, Pastor, I'm just, just going through my mind. I wonder if that's the reason uh, that since the days of Judas until this present time that nobody has named their son Judas. Yeah. Y'all know anybody who named their son Jesus? I know I'm in Pineville. I know I'm in Pineville. I've been living in New Orleans all my life. And I, 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 nobody that I know named uh, their son uh, Judas. I'm sure at one time uh, Judas was a very popular name, but not today. I'm sure at one time uh, before Judas betrayed uh, 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 Jesus Christ, Judas was a good biblical name, but not today, not now. Nobody names their son Judas. Jerry, yes. Jabari, yes. But not Judas. Jacoby, yes. Jacob, yes. But not Judas. Jaden, yes. Josiah, yes. But not Judas. John, yes. Jeremiah, yes. Uh, uh, Louis, but not Judas. Jalen, yes. Uh, Jeffrey, yes. But not Judas. Julian, yes. Jared, yes. Uh, Judah, yes. Jesse, yes. But not Judas. Jude, yes. Justin, yes. Even Joseph. People uh, named their son Joseph. But nobody has named their son uh, Judas. Nobody in their right mind would name their son Judas. Think about that, Dick. Atheists who don't even believe in Jesus Christ. Don't even name their child after Jesus Christ. They don't even believe in Jesus. But atheists don't even name their son Judas. Satanists, we got a lot of them down in New Orleans, particularly in the French Quarter and Bourbon Street, don't even name their son Judas. Followers of the alcohol don't even name their child Judas simply because I believe of what Judas did. Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Yeah. What hope, good hope is leads to an obvious question, and that is why would Judas do it? 
Why would Judas on this first night of revival, why would Judas betray Jesus Christ? Did Jesus do something to offend Judas? Did Jesus do something to make Judas mad? Did Jesus do something to upset Judas? Did Jesus preach a sermon that Judas didn't like? Did Jesus heal somebody that Judas didn't like? Was Judas jealous of Jesus' relationship with Peter, James, and John? Well, my brothers and sisters, let me answer and let me suggest this evening that Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Not because of anything Jesus did or did not do. Now, let me suggest that uh, uh, Judas betrayed Jesus not because there of anything that Jesus did, Pastor, or did not do. I suggest to you tonight that Judas betrayed Jesus because of what Satan did. Right. Judas didn't betray Jesus because of anything Jesus did. That's right. I suggest tonight that Judas betrayed Jesus Christ because of what Satan did. Satan had followed Judas long enough. Satan had watched Judas long enough. Satan had studied Judas long enough. And Satan knew by following Judas. Satan knew by watching Judas. Satan knew by how long he studied Judas that Judas had a price. Yes. 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 Satan knew that Judas had a price. That because of Judas' love for money, uh -huh. that if Judas would be offered the right amount of money. Uh -huh. That Judas would do anything, including betraying yes. Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Therefore, brothers and sisters, there's a question I need to ask everyone in the Good Hope Baptist Church tonight. And I drove all the way from Nauvoo, Louisiana to ask the question. Everyone in this church, everyone watching by way of internet, uh, I need to ask this question of everyone uh, who sung in the choir, everyone uh, on my left, everyone in the middle, everyone uh, on my right. I, I need to ask this question of every preacher that's here tonight, every deacon, every deaconess. I need to ask this question of every trustee, of every staff member, of every usher, of every guest. I need to ask this question of every greeter, every musician, every choir member. I need to ask this question of every politician that's here tonight. Yeah. I need to ask this question of every man, every woman, every college student, every high school student. I need to ask this question of every husband, of, of every wife, of every single person, of every single parent. Yes, and the question simply is, what's your price? What is your price? What offer are you willing to take from the enemy himself to betray Jesus Christ? What's your price to compromise your morals? What's your price to compromise your values? What's your price to compromise your marital vows? What's your price to compromise your convictions? What's your price to compromise what you believe about the Bible? What's your price to compromise what you believe about the scripture? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the question on this first night of revival is, what's your price? Now, before you start getting religious and looking at other people in the sanctuary, before you start getting holier than thou, before you start looking around and say, yeah, he got a price, she got a price, she got but Before you start looking at the beam in somebody else's eye, uh, 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 somebody, let me remind each and every one of us in this century, we all have a price. We all have a price. I've got a price. I ain't going to tell y'all what my price is. But I just got a key from the mayor of the city. I can get out of jail. Amen. <laughs> All of us got a price. I've got a price. You've got a price. Every last one of us in here has a price. My price may not be your price. Your price may not be my price. And that's because Satan has been following every last one of us long enough. Satan has been watching every last one of us long enough. Satan has been studying each of us long enough that he knows the weakness in everybody in here. He knows the weakness of every last one of us. That's why Peter says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober. Yes. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, 
as the roaring walks about yeah. seeking who he may devour. Yeah. And the devil knows that if he offers the right price at the right time, that he can get many of us to betray Christ by our actions, by our words, and by our lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Just like he did Judas in our text. So let's look at what led to Judas' betrayal of Jesus Christ. There are three things I want to show you tonight about Judas' betrayal of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First of all, good hope, I want you to notice that Judas' betrayal was wrong. Mm -hmm. Notice Judas' betrayal was wrong. Look at Luke chapter 22 and verse 3. The Bible says, the scripture says, the word of God says, then Satan entered Judas, surname Iscariot, don't miss this part, who was numbered among the twelve. Uh, Judas' betrayal yes. was wrong simply because Judas was one of the twelve. Right. Judas was numbered among the twelve. In other words, Judas was one of the hand-picked disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't ask for resumes. Jesus didn't ask for people to come to a polling booth and, and vote. Jesus just went, hey, Peter, uh, follow me. John, John follow me. A Andrew, yes. follow me. Uh, John, Thomas, follow me. J Judas, follow me. Yeah. Judas was one of uh, the twelve. He was one of the hand-picked disciples of Jesus Christ. That's why, pastors, his betrayal was wrong. I would understand that Captain Lewis, if a Roman soldier would have betrayed Jesus Christ. Mm. I, I would have understood it, Kevin, if a, if a Pharisee would have betrayed Jesus Christ. I would have understood it if a Sadducee would have betrayed. I would have understood it if a stranger would have betrayed Jesus Christ. I would have understood it if an unbeliever would have betrayed Jesus Christ. I would have understood if one of Jesus' enemies would have betrayed Jesus Christ. But Judas mm. was numbered uh, among the twelve. Yeah. Judas was a disciple. That's why this is wrong. Judas was an apostle. That's why this was wrong. Judas was one of the hand-picked disciples of Jesus. That's why Judas was always around uh, Jesus Christ. Judas heard all of Jesus' sermon. Judas seen all of Jesus' miracles. Jesus walked with Jesus. Judas talked with Jesus. Judas hung out with Jesus. That's why this was wrong. Judas was a part of Jesus' posse. Mm, yeah, yeah. What about you, my brothers and my sisters? Mm, my Many of us in church every Sunday. Mm, Many of us in church every Wednesday. Many of us involved in ministry here at Good Hope or somebody else's church, maybe in the choir, maybe in usher, maybe in the pulpit, maybe a musician, maybe a greeter, maybe in the men's ministry, maybe in the ladies' ministry. Many of us claim that we love Jesus, we're a follower of Jesus. However, just like Judas, if the right temptation comes along, if the devil catches us at the right time, yes, if the devil catches on us under the right circumstance, if the devil offers us the right price, we'll find ourselves betraying Christ. And that's wrong. Because God has been too good to all of us. I say God has been too good to all of us. He's been too good to you, to you, to you, and to me. Brothers and sisters, therefore the question needs to be asked tonight on this first night of revival. What's your price? Then there's a second thing I want you to notice about Judas' betrayal. Not only was Judas' betrayal wrong, but secondly, Judas' betrayal was winning me. That's not only was it wrong. But to preach, Judas' betrayal was willing me. Look at verse 4 of Luke chapter 22. The Bible says, So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. Notice Judas had a meeting with the enemies of Jesus in their office. Judas had a conference with the enemies of Jesus on their church, at their houses, at, in their hangouts, at their place. It's right there in the text. Then Satan said to Judas, I mean, uh, so he went his way and conferred with the chief priests 
and captains how he might betray Jesus Christ. Notice they didn't drag Judas there. No, no, they didn't put a gun in his head and say, you need to be with us. You need to come follow us. No, they, they didn't put a knife to his back. Uh, uh, they didn't force Judas to come there. They didn't make Judas come there. No, the Bible said Judas was a winning participant. Brothers and sisters, what's your price? What is the devil offering to you and to me that you're willing to hang out in his place? Why are you so willing to hang out in the devil's place? Why are you so willing to hang out in the casinos? Why are you so willing to hang out in the strip clubs? Why are you so willing to hang out in the crack house? Why are you so willing to hang out in the, at the racetrack? Why are you so willing, ladies, to hang out in another man's apartment? Why are you so willing, brothers, to hang out in another woman's apartment? Why are you so willing to hang out with people that you know are up to no good? Listen, my friend, if you're playing the devil's yard, you should expect to get involved in the devil's activity. Growing up in the Lord Night Ward, I used to walk day and night in the Lord Night Ward, and a lot of people had dogs in their yard, and it's always, the, you know, as long as the dog was behind the fence, I was okay. I was laughing, you know, I made fun of, yeah, yeah, you can't get me, you can't get me. Man, if you get in the devil's yard, in that dog's yard, that devil will tear my butt up. <laughs> Same with you and I, as long as we stay outside the fence, the dog can't do us anything. However, if you go into that yard, the devil can have a field day like that dog with us. In like manner, as long as we stay out of the devil's yard, we're safe. That's why 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 say, they had no temptation taking you. Such as common to man, but God is faithful. Yes, yes. He will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation. Yes. Always make a way to escape so that you and that you and that you might be able to bear. Brothers and sisters, whether it's in our own private life, whether it's in our personal life, or whether it's in our public life, the fact of the matter is we all have a price. I need to say that one more time. Yes, sir. Whether it's in our private life, Yes. Whether it's in our personal life, or whether it's in our public life, the fact of the matter is, we all have a price. Uh -huh. However, let me suggest, ladies and gentlemen, that you give the devil a good fight. And don't become so easily a willing participant. Give the devil a good fight because he's coming after us every day of his, every day of our lives. Question on the floor is, what's your price? Uh -huh. Notice what led good hope to Judas' betrayal. Number one, Judas' betrayal was wrong. He was one of the twelve. Hmm. Secondly, Judas' betrayal was willingly. He played in the devil's yeah. playground. Uh -huh. And then thirdly, finally, Judas' betrayal was due to his weakness. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Judas' betrayal was due to his weakness. Right. Luke 22 and 5 says, And they were glad and agreed to give him money. Turn back to Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 and 15. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him, 30 pieces of silver. Mm. Yes. So from that time on, he sought opportunity to betray Jesus. Mm. Judas' betrayal was due to his weakness. Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest tonight that after following Judas for so long, Pastors, I suggest that after, after watching Judas for so long, I suggest that after, after studying Judas for so long, Satan knew that Judas had a weakness for money. The devil knew that Judas had a weakness for money. Judas loved the Benjamin. Don't have any Benjamins in here, but uh, Judas loved uh, the Benjamin. Money kept him with Judas' weakness. And Lord, money was Judas' kryptonite. Money was Judas' motivation for living. 
You see, Judas held the money for the disciples. He, he held the money for the disciples. He, he held the money bag. Somebody know that Bible. Yeah. Judas loved money so much that he was willing to betray Jesus Christ yes. for the right price. Yes, right. Matthew 26 and 15, look how it reads. And he said, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. What the text passes implied to me, Pastor Joe, what the text implied to me is that Judas not only betrayed Jesus for money, but that Judas bargained with the chief priests for the right amount of money. He bargained for the right price. Again, it's in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 26. And he said, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. They bargained for this amount. Judas said, give me 50 pieces of silver. They said, no, we'll give you 20. Judas said, give me 40. Said, no, we'll give you 25. Judas said, give me 35. They said, we'll give you 30. Judas said, <laughs> So, Judas bargained with them because that was his price. And the Bible said they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment on, Judas sought to betray Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to come to close. I need to ask everyone one more time, what's your price? Right. Judas has such a weakness for money that he betrayed Jesus Christ. Money was Judas' weakness. What's yours? What will cause you and me to betray Jesus Christ? Is it the lottery? Is it the casino? What's your price? Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? What's your price? Is it pornography? Is it adultery? What's your price? Is it fornication? Is it homosexuality? What's your price? Is it lying? Is it jealousy? Is it uh, gossip? Is it hatred? Is it profanity? Is it racism? What's your price? I'm about to step on my own toes. Is it Krispy Kreme donuts? <laughs> is it Blue Bell homemade vanilla ice cream? Oh, Lord, I, I, I tell the Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Ladies, is it shopping? Is it matching out the credit cards? Is it crawfish? Is it snow crab legs? <laughs> What's the price of that habit? What's the price of that addiction? What's the price of that stronghold in your life and my life? What's the price of that relationship? What's the price of that issue? Or maybe you are like Judas. And your weakness, your price, is money. You grew up in the 70s like I did. You remember the OJ sung about it. Some people got to have it. Some people really need it. Do they, do they, do they, bad things, do they? Oh my, come on, you didn't say all your life. Ladies and gentlemen, what's your price? That the devil can offer you and me to betray our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, my brother, for a believer, it does not matter the price. Sisters, for a Christian, it does not matter the cost. Why is that, Fred? Why is that, preacher? Well, I've got some good news for you. Because Jesus paid the price at Calvary. Jesus paid the price at Calvary. Jesus paid the cost at Calvary. He shared his blood at Calvary and his blood paid the price for every last one of us to die. His blood paid the price for every last one of us who betrayed uh, Jesus Christ by our bad choices, by our bad decisions, by our bad lifestyle choices, by our bad actions, by our bad morals, by our bad weakness. Yes, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All oh, to him we owe. Sin has never a prison stand. But thank God Jesus washes it right up that snow. He washes it right up that snow. That's why it's going to be all right, brothers. That's why it's going to be all right, sisters. That's why it's going to be all right, 
action. That's why it's going to be all right because Jesus paid it all. And all to him. Uh, we know, well, friend, how can you say that with such assurance? How can you say that with such passion? How can you say that with such confidence? Well, I can say it because without a doubt, there's a fountain filled with them. John from Emmanuel's name. And sinners plunge beneath that flood to all his guilt and stain. And because of Jesus' blood, I've been redeemed. And you've been redeemed. And you've been redeemed. And you've been redeemed. We've been washed up in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yes. Jesus paid the price. So we will not have a price. Father, thank you and praise you. Thank you, Lord. For the privilege of sharing this message tonight. Yes. God, none of us are exempt. Yes. All of us in here have a price. Yeah. Yes. Because the enemy has been studying us long enough that he, he offered us the right price. Whether it's in our private life and our, yeah. our, our, our public life, God, uh, we know that the enemy is always out to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yeah. Yeah. But God, I pray for every last one of us in here yeah. on this first night of revival. That God, you can give us the victory yes. because of the blood yes. of Jesus sharing yes. on the cross. Yes. Help us, God, to know Help that us, you already paid the price. Yes. So the devil can't offer us a price. Because we've been washed yes. in the blood of the Lamb. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. And for our sake. Let people God say. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. God keep you. for maintenance for a lifetime. Would you receive it? What if someone paid the price as Pastor Luther has shared with us for your salvation? Yes. The question was asked, what is your price? What's your price? But I want to share with you what is your worth. Your worth is that Jesus thought enough of you to shed his blood on Calvary. He thought enough of you. He who did not know sin became sin for you and for me. He already paid the price. Yes. Yes. I, I had uh, an addiction that I, I got over maybe a couple of years ago. I would get emails from PCH.com. <laughs> 5000 a week for life. <laughs> then they bumped it up to 10000 <laughs> A week for life. Now, I think at one point they even bumped it up to fifteen thousand a week for life. So when I get that email from PCH.com, I would go in. I'm like, I ain't buying nothing. I'm just gonna get to the end where they can tell me 
go ahead and enter. I never won anything from TCS.com. But a few years ago, right here in Good Hope Baptist Church, I realized that a man named Jesus had paid the price for my salvation. I had a debt I could not pay. He had a debt paid a debt that he did not owe. Jesus paid it all. He paid the price with his blood. As we stand all over the sanctuary this evening, the question is, Jesus paid the price. But have you accepted that price that he paid for you? This Passion Week, as we are looking ahead this week to celebrating Good Friday, Jesus paid the price by shedding his blood on Calvary and innocent man convicted to die. Not just to die for us, but to die in our place. Have you accepted that sacrifice on tonight? The question is not, are you a member of the church? The question is, are you a member of the church? Because as Pastor Luther shared with us, Judas was on the inside. But he wasn't on the inside. If you're here tonight, And you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the words of the Apostle Paul, absent from the body, need to be present with the Lord, is true in your life. I invite you all tonight to come forward. Paul wrote to the church at Rome that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He also wrote that the wages of sin is death. But, oh, when you feel but, God is turning something around. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So tonight, I'm not simply inviting you to become a member of Good Hope. I'm not inviting you to become a member of Franklin Avenue. I'm not inviting you to become a member of Greater New Zion. I'm not inviting you to become a member of Christian Challenge. Even though all of us pastors would love to have you in our congregation, but it is more important to us that you're a part of the body of Christ. If you're here on tonight, we invite you to come. Just like all those years ago, I was sitting in the pew right in front of where the mayor and councilman, Pastor Martin, was sitting. I was sitting in that second pew in one third Sunday night. The Spirit of God touched me and I came forward. You too can come tonight. Well, you might say I've been in the church for a long time and it would be embarrassing for me to come forward and say, I need to be saved. It would be more embarrassing for you to stand before the Lord and he says, oh, yeah. I never knew you. After all the things you did in the church, he says, I never knew you. Come tonight. If you're watching online, you don't have to be in the building because the church is greater than a building. But right now, where you are, where you're watching online, you may be in your living room, you may be uh, uh, on side of the road in your car, wherever you are, you can receive that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, but you can receive him right now, right where you are. Just let the Lord know that you know you have sinned. Let the Lord know that you know you have this kingship. Admit that you have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And once you give your sins to him, acknowledge to Jesus that you believe that he died on the cross, that you believe he rose on the third day. Believe it in your heart. And right where you are, you can become a part of the body of Christ. And if you're watching online and you're not a part of a church family and you receive Jesus Christ on tonight on the power of this gospel message that has been shared on tonight, I invite you to find a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church where you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is there one here tonight? And if you are here and you would like to become a part of the Good Hope family, I tell Good Hope every Sunday, if the Holy Spirit didn't send you here, don't come. Because God sets the members as it pleases Him. The Holy Spirit gives the gifts as it pleases Him. If you're not in the right place, if you're not in the right environment where the Holy Spirit has planted you to grow, then you will not receive everything that you need to receive. Yes. But if the Lord has spoken to you and said, this is where you need to be, I invite you to come. Finally, there may be someone here who has recognized your pride. And you just need someone to pray with you. We, we have prayer warriors. We have pastors in the house. If you're in the need of prayer right now and you would just like to come forward and have us to agree with you in prayer in your situation, we invite you to come. Whatever your situation is, Jesus already paid the price. Yes. Whatever you did, it's not so bad that Jesus' precious blood did not cover the price yes. for what you did. It is ours to give the invitation and yours to answer. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Luther. For that thought-provoking, inspired word to cause us all to evaluate what is our Christ. We're so looking forward to what the Lord has for us on tomorrow night. To God be the glory for the things he has done. And, and something else I thought about, Pastor Luther, we have a former mayor in the house as well, Thank Patrick you. Clark, the former mayor of the town of the town. The metropolitan area only. Uh, the, the, metro, the metropolitan <laughs> area only. Uh, <laughs> so, so Pastor Clark has also served as, as an elected official here in Amen. central Louisiana. Again, we thank God for each and every one of you being here on tonight. So at this point, uh, we're getting ready to close our service, but not close our revival. Amen. Amen. So, any last words you have for us? I just want to be rushing to thank all of you for coming out again in the rain. It, it means so much uh, to be here, and particularly uh, our mayor on his birthday, man. God bless you, baby. God bless you. God bless you. Such a blessing. And again, I, I echo the sentiments of Pastor Luder, my friend, Mayor, my friend, Councilman, my cousin friend, Councilman. <laughs> 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 and and, and uh, Sister Dorn, I'm sure you're, you're watching, and uh, we just thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to plant the seed to have Pastor Luther to come here and share with us all tonight. So again, we're we're uh, we're not going to do the benediction until tomorrow night. But if we could just stand for a word of prayer as we prepare to go out, Father God, we thank you for all that you have allowed to take place on this night. We thank you for the man of God who brought the Word of God, inspired by the Spirit of God. We pray that you will just continue to keep him in your care. And Father God, as we prepare to go out this evening to our various destinations, we pray that you will encamp your angels around us, keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father, we, we know that you are in control. You are in control of the sun. You are in control of the rain. And we just pray, Holy Spirit, that we will allow you to be in control of us. So we just thank you and we praise you and we 
Thank you in advance for what you are going to do with the remaining night of this revival. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Make sure that you greet this man of God before you leave the building tonight. Amen.